It seems like every culture and religion across the world has some kind of snake character as part of their mythology. They're definitely one of those love them or hate them kind of creatures, you know? Today, we're gonna set aside any phobias that we might have of slithering serpents and dig into some of the stories that tie snakes and stones together. Our journey begins on the eastern side of the United States. Here, Native American tribes seem to hold many similar beliefs and traditions. These tribes all have oral traditions that stretch back generations, and many of these stories that get passed down feature, you guessed it, snakes. The Muscogee people of the Southeast Woodlands tell a story of a great horned water snake with glittering gems for scales and a large crystal in the middle of its forehead. Kind of like the little Uzi Vert of Native American mythology. The scales of this snake, as well as its forehead gem, are believed to possess powers of divination, while its horns are said to have medicinal properties. There's no need to fear this snake, though. It might have horns like a stag, but it's not a bad snake. While the Muscogee people have no need to fear their horned serpent, the Cherokee people have a whole different story to tell. The snake of Cherokee legend goes by the name of Uktena and is as big around as a tree trunk. Like the Muscogee water snake, it too has horns and a blazing crest like a diamond in its forehead. Anyone who managed to make off with this crest would become the greatest wonder worker in his tribe. But the price of failure is steep. Anyone who lay eyes on the radiant light that comes from the snake's diamond crest is compelled to run towards the massive snake, spelling certain doom. Its breath is absolutely foul, and one whiff of it alone can kill you. In fact, if you're unlucky enough to even spy this thing sleeping, your family will die. Not you, just your family. Remember that next time you're considering stealing the diamond from this snake's forehead. Uktena plays no games. It turns out that gems in the foreheads of serpents is not unique to only Native American tribes. Across the world, in India, a similar belief is held by some to this day. There, a snake stone is referred to as a nagamani, and they're used by some people to treat snake bites. Now, while getting one of these stones is way less dangerous than stealing from Uktena himself, it's certainly a gruesome process. It's said that when a cobra doesn't use all of its venom, it collects and hardens over time, either depositing in the tail or the head of the snake. Finding a snake that hasn't used all of its venom and is old enough for that venom to have solidified is tricky enough, but then you have to catch it and cut the stone out while it's still alive. Ugh. There are a few videos out there that attempt to confirm the legitimacy of these cobra pearls, but they can be graphic and are not for the faint of heart. The theory of the cobra pearl is founded on a mix of superstition and myth, and there are many people who believe the whole thing to be a scam. And honestly, if we can find pearls growing inside mollusks at the bottom of the ocean, then I think we would have found cobra pearls a long time ago. India isn't the only place where snake stones are used to treat snake bites, though. They are used in South America, Africa, and other parts of Asia. They're sometimes referred to as black stones and are often not a stone at all. In Peru, a snake stone is a charred piece of cow bone that you leave pressed against the wound for several days. A Persian Iranian writer named Kazwini describes a snake stone as about the size and shape of a nut. Standard treatment procedure involves soaking the wound in warm water, or sour milk, either works, and then plopping the snake stone on in there. While some of these medicinal practices are rooted in long-standing tradition, the World Health Organization does not take a favorable position on snake stones. Studies show that snake bite victims who use a snake stone before going in for treatment typically require more anti-venom than someone who passes on the snake stone and just goes straight to the hospital. But you know who didn't need any kind of snake bite treatment? St. Hilda of Whitby. Legend says that she stood on the edge of the Yorkshire coastline that was simply writhing with snakes. She uttered a powerful prayer that decapitated all of the snakes and turned them into stone. This legend was used to explain the existence of ammonite fossils. In fact, some local artisans at the time would carve little snake heads into these fossils and then sell them as further proof of St. Hilda's miraculous deed. St. Patrick may have driven all the snakes out of Ireland, but Hilda went full Medusa mode on them. Imagine how rowdy that holiday would be. Perhaps the most famous snake in all of Christianity is the serpent that tempts Eve in the Garden of Eden. The serpent convinced Eve to take a bite of the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which God had forbidden them from doing. Then she went and got Adam to take a bite as well. God, seeing that they had broken literally the only rule that he had given them, cast them out of the garden, never to return. All thanks to this snake. What a jerk, right? Well, not everyone felt that way. 
The Ophites were a Christian Gnostic group that actually revered the serpent over Christ. The way they saw it, we had the serpent to thank for teaching us free will and the knowledge of good and evil. There's not much recorded about these guys, but they were rumored to wear jewelry made of Ophite. It comes from the Greek word Ophis, meaning snake, and was actually probably serpentine. Serpentine is a beautiful green gem with a waxy luster, though its color can range from green to yellowish or even red, and even black and white. It's been used for carving and ornamentation for centuries, and it's still very popular to this day. One cool thing about it is that it's polymorphic, meaning that the varieties of serpentine can all have the same chemical composition, but different crystal structures. This means its hardness can range from 2.5 all the way to six on the Mohs scale, depending on the material that you have and the crystal structure of it. That's all for today, guys. Hopefully we helped cure your fear of snakes a little bit, or who knows, maybe we made some new ones. Just remember, if you see a snake in the woods with a glowing forehead, turn around and leave. And tell me guys, what gemstone would you choose to represent your posse? Let me know down in the comments and do not forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching.